Good afternoon. Um, greetings from Ann Arbor, Michigan. As Linda mentioned, it is uh, warm here right now, but um, we uh, hold a promise that by the start of next week, when the first session, first four week session starts, it will be much cooler, much milder, and more typical of the Ann Arbor, Michigan climate. Uh, I am Sandy Schneider. I'm the director of the ICPSR summer program. And the very first thing that I'd like to do is just to introduce some of the people who you will see in the summer program if you attend when you're attending this this year. Um, we have uh, a number of folks who play very critical roles in making sure that we have the summer program up and running and also important roles in helping all of you assisting in, in various ways. Um, Dita Burrell, who is the project manager for educational services. He is the individual who really provides a lot of assistance to people to make sure that you can get into the classes that you want to attend and that you are in the, the right classes um, that you where you want to be involved. Uh, Edward Seeley, who's the project manager for computing services. He makes sure that all of the computing, the information technology uh, is up and running and that you not only have access to the materials that the various instructors would ask you to look at, um, but that you have access so that you can communicate outside of Ann Arbor. Uh, Filippo Stargell, who is a financial specialist who makes sure that the revenues for the program come in and that also uh, they go out in order to again ensure that we have um, the facilities running during the summer. He also is in charge, the main supervisor for the support staff and the support staff is involved in helping to determine what kind of reading materials and to make sure that they're available to all of you and um, he has a, a staff of a number of people who help during the summer months, temporary employees. Stephanie Carpenter, who uh, is a digital and educational support specialist, who many of you probably have already communicated with. Stephanie not only is really the main liaison between the program and all of you, uh, really the outside world, but uh, she also provides a number of important tasks internally to, to make sure that we're organized and we get, we get things running the way we should. Scott Campbell, who is a videographer for the program, is the main person who not only records, but uh, uploads and puts out, um, in terms of general broadcast, uh, the videos that you see not only on our website, but that you will see a little bit of uh, during the welcome session, the orientation sessions of uh, this year. Shannon Nuri, who is our summer administrative assistant, she will be located in the main office in the headquarters for the summer program, which will again be back in what we refer to as kind of the normal headquarters for the program, which is a, um, a residence called Helen Newberry Residence on campus. And there are a number of other people who, who you will encounter during the summer, but again, I wanted to just make you familiar with who the primary characters will be and so that you're aware of them when you meet them and when you see them. The check-in schedule and registration for the first four-week session is rapidly approaching. In fact, it's one week away. And you should have received a notice about this to indicate what we have planned for the check-in schedule. Uh, 9 a.m. and 1 p.m., the check-in is only check-in. We will um, try to get through process and talk to people who only need to be checked in to, to let us know that they're attending the program and to distribute the critical information about where the classes are going to be, uh, various events that are coming up, and the timing and the dates of those, of those particular events. The advising starts at 10 a.m. and it goes until approximately 4 p.m. on the afternoon uh, of next Monday. And it is divided up by the last 
um, starting at letter of your name, your last name, so that if your name begins with the letter A, we would expect to see you at 10 a.m. Um, and if your last name begins with the letter N, we would expect to see you at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, we've tried to organize it this way in order to ensure that we are able to get people through much more quickly and also much more effectively because the advisement sessions are, are advisement sessions and they're designed to give you the opportunity to ask questions about the courses, about particular aspects of the course, and to try to match that up to what your own particular needs are. And it is, those are designed to really meet what you need out of the program and to help you determine that you're in the right workshops, the right lectures, and to give you much more content and much more information about what those courses will entail. The location of the um, check-in and registration will be in the Modern Languages Building, oftentimes just referred to on campus as MLB. And this is located at 812 Washington Street, and it is in one of the main auditorium rooms, auditorium number four. We will have signs posted to help you identify where the room is and where the building is. And you can also locate the Modern Languages Building on the University of Michigan campus. Uh, it is located in Central Campus, very easy to identify, not only on that map, but very easy to identify if you're walking around campus. There will be no classes on June 25th, next Monday, except for one, and that is the LaTeX lecture, which occurs in the evening from 5.30 to 7.30. And the LaTeX lecture is just a one evening lecture. So I encourage you, if you're interested in learning anything about LaTeX, that you attend that lecture because we will not offer another one during the four-week session. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the summer program headquarters is in Helen Newberry residence. And you have uh, on the screen the hours of Helen Newberry. And on the second floor of Helen Newberry, we have a library, which we always set up and we always operate during the four-week sessions of the program. The library contains the copies of the required readings, the required text of the workshops and the lectures. Now, it does not have all uh, of the materials that might be on a particular syllabus. If an uh, instructor, for example, mentions supplemental materials or additional materials, that material is probably or may not be in the, in the library. In addition, in Helen Newberry, we not only have a computing lab, which will be on the first floor as you walk in, we have some space set aside so that you can study and that you can talk to other participants and instructors. And of course, we have all of the instructor and TA offices as well as the administrative staff offices located in Helen Newberry. And you will receive, you will get a handbook which identifies the location of all of the offices for the instructors, for the teaching assistants, and for all of the summer program staff members. Course information, very quickly, most of the courses, if not all, uh, will be held uh, in the buildings that you see listed here, starting with Angel Hall, Mason Hall, Modern Languages, and Chemistry. Um, there are some class times where we may have to move people out of the building or out of a particular class because of other things that are going on on campus, but these will be the primary locations for your workshops and for the lectures. Uh, the summer program goes by the University of Michigan time clock, which means that courses start 10 minutes after the hour. And we do that in order to accommodate kind of what people are used to here on campus. And it also gives you the opportunity to get from one class to the next. The building locations for the classes are not terribly far apart, but it, it is the case that they're not immediately next to each other in some cases. So you need a little bit of time to get from one place to the next. 
Many people ask about the size of the courses, and they're quite variable. The lectures are much larger in size because the lectures in the four-week sessions of the program are, as, it's, as the name implies, they're lectures. They do not ask that you engage in any reading assignments or that you um, have exercises or homeworks. The idea is that you get exposed to either various statistical software programs um, or other various topics in mathematics, depending upon which mathematics course you might want to sign up for. But the, the lectures are, are much larger than the workshops. The workshops can vary in size from 15 participants to, in some cases, about 80 or 90 participants. And that, again, varies according to the content, the subject matter of the workshops. The more advanced workshops tend to be a bit smaller, and the workshops that are in higher demand or that people want to retake because they need a refresher, like the regression workshops, tend to be larger. We strongly recommend that you take two workshops during the time that you're in the four-week session and that you limit your participation to two workshops. You can, you can set in or participate uh, in a more, what I would refer to kind of an auditing status in a third workshop, but it is very difficult to engage fully in three workshops during four weeks. It's, it's a lot to try to handle. So we want to make sure that you learn the material and that you also are able to assimilate it and to take that information with you when you leave the program. You can, and we encourage you to take supplemental lectures in addition to the workshops. And we encourage you to take either one of the three math lectures that will be offered during the first four week sessions, as well as any of the computing lectures that are offered either the R workshop or the, the workshop, the computing, um, excuse me, the computing lecture that looks at various software programs, data, SPSS, and SAS. Again, two workshops recommended with in as many supplemental lectures as you would like to add to your, to the, the, the course that you're going to take. We will distribute a participant handbook, which contains basic information, fundamental information about where we are located, where your courses are located, the schedule of those courses, as well as a series of lectures that we offer in the evening that are called the Blaylock Lectures. And these are named after a very famous social scientist, uh, Hubert Blaylock, and they are really divided into a number of, of different topics. Some are topics on how to use data, how to think about the not only the utilization of data, but how to think about the quality and the reproducibility of data. Some of these lectures are also aimed directly at diversity, equity, and inclusiveness issues. So there, again, there's a variety of lectures that we provide, and these are grouped together under the category, the Blaylock Lectures. Again, these run in the, in the evening. These are additional lectures, presentations, discussions that you can take. And then they do not, uh, they're part of the four-week sessions. They're not something that uh, requires extra uh, in terms of, of anything else. We also have planned some social events. And the first one actually occurs on Monday evening next week, and I'll mention that in just a second. Uh, we have some other social events coming up throughout the four-week sessions, as well as um, one new social event that we've added this year. Uh, facilities information and a guide to Ann Arbor. Again, all of this is included in the participant handbook. Uh, there's also information in that handbook about issues of sexual harassment and discrimination to ensure you that if you 
are in a situation where you feel uncomfortable and you feel that those issues should be addressed, that you have some guidance as to how what, what process you need to follow. I also talk about that during the registration and check-in session, again, just to reinforce the importance of those issues. During the check-in session on Monday, you will receive information that gives you the ability to have access to the University of Michigan um, email system, the campus computing, the labs, and the M-Wireless you know, internet connection, all of which are, are critical in terms of, of the exposure that you have and the experience that you have here on campus. Textbooks. Again, a question that we're often asked is, do I need to buy the textbooks ahead of time, or should I wait and get them when I arrive in Ann Arbor? Where can I get them if, if I do wait until I get here? Uh, there will be a number of, a limited number of required textbooks available in the summer program library um, in Helen Newberry. Um, and the best way that I would recommend for you to buy a textbook, if you're interested in doing so, is to purchase them online. And again, if you're interested in buying your own personal copy of a textbook, you should do that by, uh, first of all, checking out or looking at the materials ahead of time to make sure that this is a book that you want to purchase, that you want to buy. But um, it as we've moved into the era of online purchasing, not only of textbooks, but almost of all merchandise, uh, the easiest, the best way, if you want to buy a textbook on your, and, and keep it as a personal copy, is to do it online. There are course packs available and are accessible to you for some of the workshops. Um, and we, we will, again, provide more information about that. Not all of the workshops have those, but a, a number of them do. Um, so we give you the information that you need if you want to purchase a course pack for a particular workshop that you might be taking. Um, this gets to the summer program events, and a couple of these I've already mentioned, so I'll just uh, reinforce them. The first session welcome party, which occurs next Monday, next Monday evening at 7.30, and the location is the Institute for Social Research, 426 Thompson Street. Again, a, a building that you can easily find on the university map and that we will make sure that you have directions to so that you can attend the welcome party. This is a great opportunity for you to kind of meet other people who are attending the four-week session, not only other participants, but instructors, teaching assistants, uh, and the summer program staff, as well as others at ICPSR and ISR who play a role in terms of making sure that the summer program works and that the summer program not only works, but that it works well. So I encourage you to come to the first session welcome party. We have several picnics that we plan throughout the four-week sessions. The first one is on Saturday, uh, June 30th. And then the, the second one for the four weeks, first four-week session is on Saturday, July 14th. And these are at Burns Park, which is probably about a 20-minute walk from Central Campus. And we make sure that you have a map. We make sure that you uh, are reminded fairly consistently ab about the picnic. And you have some information about what, uh, not only where it is, but what the, um, what the menu will be so that if you're interested in attending, which we hope you are, um, you will be there. The Blaylock Lectures, again, Wednesday evening throughout the four-week sessions, and you'll get a schedule of that um, on Monday when you arrive at the program. We also have coffee and donuts lined up every Wednesday morning at Helen Newberry. That's the main headquarters for the summer program. And as I mentioned, the special social event is the Tigers game, Detroit Tigers baseball game on Saturday, July 7th. Um, we did this a long time ago and then brought back the, the Tigers game as, as an event that we wanted to really promote and that we wanted to um, try to get as many 
folks involved in the summer program to attend. It's a lot of fun. After attending the four-week session, most participants will request a certificate, which confirms, gives not only you, but your advisors and your graduate program or your organization confirmation that you were involved and that you participated in the lectures and the workshops. And you could request that during the last four weeks of the first session. We also give grade letter memorandums, which provide what the instructor's graded evaluation of your work and participation in a workshop is. Those grade letter memorandums will only be given for the workshops. They're not given for the lectures. And again, you can request that during the last week of the first four-week session. If you're interested in EITM certification, um, then you can also ask for that. It's available if you are attending and participating in workshops at the regression two or higher level, and you must receive a grade of A minus or better in order to receive the EITM, Empirical Implications of Theoretical Models certification. University of Michigan Library and Gym, even though the summer program is a very intense experience, it's also the case that we want to make sure that you have the ability to um, exercise and to release some of the, the the tension and some of that kind of mental information that's going on in your head with physical exercise. So you have the ability to purchase a gym pass, gym membership at the University of Michigan Central Campus Recreational Building. And again, we'll reinforce this and give you, give you uh, that information again. You can also receive borrowing privileges at the University of Michigan Library System. Um, if you need a space or need um, some location to do your studying or to do your preparation for class, this is a, a, it's a great place to do that. It also uh, is a great opportunity to kind of explore what the University of Michigan Library holdings have and for you to, to see exactly what's, what's available there. Parking and transportation, we, um, you have University of Michigan parking passes, but will not be available for participants, um, but you can park adjacent or near campus. And one of the great things about Ann Arbor, that the bus systems are very easy to use of the university buses, which are called the blue buses, are not only easy, but they're free, which is a, a great service. And they run between central and north campus areas. The Ann Arbor bus system is also very good, and it services all of Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti, and it's relatively inexpensive, a uh, dollar and a half per ride, um, and as the, the slide indicates, $58 a month. And you can get that information by going to uh, the, the site that's listed here. And once again, we will we will give you that info so that um, if you you miss it on the slides, you have it when you get here. With that, I'm going to open it up to all of you and see if you have any questions that you would like to ask us here um, while you have that opportunity. And even if you are not so inclined to ask a question during this webinar. I encourage you to ask questions when you arrive in Ann Arbor on Monday, especially during the check-in and registration period, but at any time from Monday on during the week. The first week of the, of the four-week session is really the time to ask questions about any aspect of the summer program, Ann Arbor, or the University of Michigan campus. So let me open it up to all of you and see what your questions are. Hi, this is Stephanie Carpenter, and I'm going to be leading the Q&A. Uh, please uh, send in your questions, like Sandy said, and we will do our best to answer them. Um, so we had somebody ask about dress code, and um, we tried to provide them with an answer, but I think it would be helpful if um, we kind of gave a statement about dress code uh, generally for everybody else. Dieter, would you like to talk about that? Sure. Um, 
There is no dress code for the summer program, except perhaps uh, summer casual. Um, so there's no formal dress code, no business dress code. Um, people do um, mostly, as I said, uh, come in, in casual. One thing you'll want to do is bring along a sweater or a pullover or a light jacket of some kind because the classrooms can be quite chilly at times. It's hard for us to control the the, the temperature because it's a central a, a, AC for a building. So bring something like that. The weather at Ann Arbor can vary a good deal. We've had summers where we've gone for weeks where it's been chilly during the day and the evening, so you need a little uh, sweater or, or coat. We've had other times where it's been hot and humid for weeks on end um, from um, uh, both uh, days and night. So uh, bring a variety of clothing. Great, thank you. So we had somebody ask where they can purchase the gym pass. So when you get here um, that first day, we will send you an email um, with instructions on how to purchase the gym pass, um, kind of to give you a sense of what it is. Uh, you'll go to the Central Campus Recreation Building here on campus, and we'll give you that address and uh, directions. And you will just go in and let them know that you would like to purchase a guest pass and that you're with the summer program. We had somebody ask, what's the best way to get from Detroit to Ann Arbor? Uh, are there shuttles or should they uh, go ahead and get an Uber? Uh, my recommendation would actually be um, to use the Michigan Flyer Air Ride. It is a large uh, bus that um, runs back and forth between uh, Detroit Metro Airport and uh, downtown Ann Arbor. And if you book your fare ahead of time, uh, it's only about $12 uh, for a ride. So it's probably the cheapest option uh, that you're going to find out there. Um, you can find a link to that uh, from our website. Just go to the visitor page and kind of scroll down towards the bottom uh, until you get to the transportation and parking section. Uh, we have a question from somebody who asked, are they required to arrive on June 25th for check-in if they signed up for a two-week workshop that runs from July 9th through July 20th? Sandy, would you like to answer that? If you, um, we've asking, we're asking that you do attend the check-in and the registration, but if you do not have any questions about particular courses, you just need to attend one of the two check-in se sessions, and that gives you, that lets us know that you're here and that also uh, gives you the information about where your classes will be and all of the events that are coming up in the program. Thank you. This is Dieter. I, I want to add also that if you're taking a course that starts on July 9th, and if you need some of the supplemental material or the material that's presented in any of the lectures, whether it's a computer course or one of the math courses, um, keep that in mind. So you may end up taking, for instance, the uh, uh, a regression one class and then realize that you want to learn about uh, a particular software package. Well, that's going to be taught in the intro to computing classes, uh, a lecture which is going to be early in the session. Thank you. Uh, somebody has asked, is there a location where we can print on campus and about how much does it cost to print? Uh, Edward, could you answer that? Sure. Um, you have a couple of options for printing on campus. One is you can use uh, printers located at Helen Newberry residence. You'll be able to print directly from your uh, personal device, or you can use one of the workstations in the Newberry lab uh, to use those printers. You can also print to campus uh, compute, uh, printers that are loca located on the campus computing sites. Um, to do that, you're going to need to obtain a, um, a printer card from any of the University of Michigan uh, libraries. And uh, these are prepaid cards that you can um, add funds to, and then you'll use those cards to access campus uh, computing sites printers. If you'd like more detailed information about that, you can speak to one of the computing consultants when you arrive in Ann Arbor, we'll be happy to help you. We also have a computing support uh, website that you'll be able to uh, 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 check that has further details about uh, campus printing. Thank you. 
Somebody has asked if the city of Ann Arbor has uh, parking pass options for people who would like to buy parking kind of in bulk or if it's just pay by the hour. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, and uh, Dieter or Edward Sandy, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, Ann Arbor um, monthly lots, I believe, are booked out pretty far in advance. So I think the only parking available for visitors uh, in the city of Ann Arbor uh, parking structures and lots is going to be pay by the hour. Uh, we had somebody ask um, if they want to get a head start on purchasing textbooks or other course materials, uh, should they contact the course instructor to ask uh, kind of what they need for the course, or is this information available in the portal? Uh, Dieter, could you answer that? The information is available on the, the website, so go to the course description for the course that you're interested in, and towards the bottom there's a link where you can click on and obtain a, 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 a download, a PDF copy of the syllabus for that particular course. You'll be able to see what the required readings uh, is so uh, or are for that class. Uh, so if there's textbooks that's uh, required, you can look at that. You can then go ahead and purchase in advance. Uh, also see what the, all the other readings are. Just be careful that you're sure you're going to take that class. Uh, we do allow people to move around, to set through a class for the first couple of days and, and move around if you're not sure. So if you're not quite sure if you're, going to, if you're going to take the Regression 1 or Regression 2 course and you want to sit in on both of them and then make your decision after a couple of days, uh, you're welcome to do that. So um, if you do order a text for one of those classes and uh, just keep your receipt and whatever it takes to return it back to the, uh, to the company that you bought it from. Thank you. Uh, somebody has asked, uh, or explain that they have a Mac and they know that certain software may not work on it. Uh, should they bring a Windows computer or are there ample ones available in the computer labs on campus? Edward? Um, there are Macs on campus that you'll be able to access as well as PCs. Um, I don't think you'll have too much of a problem with, with a, a Mac computer at the summer program a great number of participants bring their Macs with them and have no trouble at all. Um, you may have a little bit of difficulty perhaps connecting to uh, the wireless service or maybe setting up printing at Helen Newberry residence, but we can help you with that. Uh, as far as the software that you'll be running, um, most of the software used in the, in the program uh, if it's able to be installed on a PC, you can probably get it installed on, on a Mac. And if there's that one application that you need um, that you just can't get installed on your Mac, you can always use the um, Summer Program Virtual Desktop to access the software. So I, I, I don't think you need to load yourself down bringing multiple machines. Bring, bring the device you're most comfortable with, and uh, we'll do our best to uh, make things work for you while you're here. Great, thank you. Uh, somebody has asked if there is a deadline to uh, sign up uh, for the Tigers game. Uh, there isn't, um, but last time I checked, um, it looks like uh, about a third of the tickets were already purchased, uh, and we do have a limited number of tickets. So if you're interested in going, I would encourage you uh, to sign up sooner rather than later, because once those tickets are gone, they're gone. <laughs> so we hope you'll be able to come with us to it. Um, they're going to be playing the Texas Rangers that day. Um, somebody has asked if they can attend some of the workshops and lectures just as a listener or an auditor without registration. Sandy? Yes, it's certainly possible to attend um, workshops and lectures that you have not explicitly signed up for as long as you have signed up for other workshops and lectures in, in the four-week session. The, the only restriction that we have is that it is not possible if you've not signed up for the four-week session to attend um, any of the, the workshops, lectures, or classes in the summer program. And that's to ensure that we have people who are supposed to, to be here, actually here, um, involved in participating in the workshops. But if you're, if you're registered and you're a part of the, the four-week session and you want to sit in on a particular class or a workshop just to maybe get exposure to that material, to hear a topic you are 
curious about, you can certainly do that. Thanks. Somebody has asked if there is special training for beginners in statistics and math. Uh, Dieter? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, the training um, is the uh, Mathematics for Social Scientists 1 and the Introduction to Statistics and Data Analysis 1. So those, those are the courses that you'll want to think about, as well as sitting in on the Intro to Computing courses. Um, uh, the instructors in our intro classes are, are very good and uh, um, they're very, very useful for you. Thanks. Uh, somebody has also asked, what is the experience like for international participants? Uh, I'm going to throw this one out there to whoever wants it. It's fun, um, and uh, you learn a lot. So we have a large number of, of international participants, both who are students, mostly grad students in the U.S. who uh, uh, come to the program, and those who come from outside. Uh, maybe a quarter, a third, some large percentage of the participants are are not uh, uh, U.S. folks. Uh, uh, they come. We'll have people come from. 35 countries or something like that, um, as well as U.S., Canada, and Mexico. Uh, um, so there's a, a variety of folks from a variety of different disciplines. So you have an opportunity to meet people who are studying across the social and behavioral sciences and at all, all sorts of institutions, uh, different types of institutions, and from all a large number of countries. Thanks. Uh, somebody has asked if our classes use R, Stata, SPSS, or another specific software, kind of primarily or more than uh, the other. Uh, Sandy? Yes, um, it's a very good question because it, it, I know it's important to people if you know a software program and you're familiar with it, you want to make sure that the course that you're taking um, is continuing that exposure and familiarity. Um, you can find information on the, the course descriptions that Dieter referred to. Most of the, the workshops certainly have information about what the software will be that they will use in the courses. Um, it's also the case that in, I believe, all of the workshops that we're running this summer, that as long as you're using a software program that is widely we're familiar with, like starting with SPSS, Stata, SAS, uh, and R, that um, you'll be fine, that the workshops are designed to accommodate you and to enable you to do the assignments or do the exercises or to follow along using the software that you're familiar with. Um, but again, you can find out what the instructor is going to be using to give his or her examples and to um, provide illustrations in their lectures by looking at the syllabus. And you can certainly get that information uh, the first day of the workshops, which will be next Tuesday, where all of the instructors will give you not only what the content is of the course, but they will relay to you what software they use and what software you can expect to see in, in their examples. Thanks. Uh, somebody has asked, if I'm auditing a lecture, would you suggest buying the book for the course? Uh, that's ultimately going to be up to you, but I can say that we, um, we do provide uh, copies of all the required text in the summer program library in the Newberry building, so you're welcome to check out those um, books um, before deciding to buy if you'd like. Uh, somebody has asked, uh, they have a two-part question actually, uh, how much time should they expect to spend on readings and assignments for the workshops, and um, do the requirements differ if we're not taking the class for a grade? Sandy? Uh, another very good set of questions. Um, the amount of time that you can expect to spend is somewhat dependent upon what your exposure and what your background is when you come into the class. You know, if you're very familiar with a topic and you're there to get a refresher or a reminder or just kind of go over some material you've had before, then the amount of time you spend looking at the reading materials, doing the exercises will, will be much more limited than if this is the first time that you've seen 
the, the material on time series analysis, for example, or on uh, maximum likelihood estimation. Um, it's always true as well that if you um, work with and talk to other participants that it helps you and it gives you uh, an idea about how quickly you can pick up the material and talking to other people, not only others who are in your, in your workshops and lectures, but also uh, I encourage people to talk to the teaching assistants and the instructors to get help and assistance. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, somebody has asked how many participants are there for this first session? Um, last time I looked this morning, uh, it looked like we had around 280 people signed up, uh, which is a really good, strong cohort, so I can't wait to see you all next week. Um, any other questions, feel free to send them in now or send them in via email, or you can also call on the phone. All right, well, it looks like things have slowed down and uh, we don't have any other questions, so uh, thanks to everyone for joining us. Thank you. We'll see you next week in Ann Arbor.